Chapters 1 through 7 of the Gospel according to Matthew. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Gospel according to Matthew from the Weymouth New Testament in Modern Speech, translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 1 through 7. Chapter 1 The Genealogy of Jesus Christ, the Son of David, the Son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac of Jacob, Jacob of Judah and his brothers. Judah was the father, by Tamar, of Perez and Zerah, Perez of Hezron, Hezron of Ram, Ram of Amminadab, Amminadab of Nashon, Nashon of Salmon, Salmon by Rahab of Boaz, Boaz by Ruth of Obed, Obed of Jesse, Jesse of David, the king. David by Uriah's widow was the father of Solomon, Solomon of Rehoboam, Rehoboam of Abijah, Abijah of Asa, Asa of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat of Jehoram, Jehoram of Uzziah, Uzziah of Jotham, Jotham of Ahaz, Ahaz of Hezekiah, Hezekiah of Manasseh, Manasseh of Amon, Amon of Josiah, Josiah of Jeconiah and his brothers, at the period of the removal to Babylon. After the removal to Babylon, Jeconiah had a son, Shealtiel. Shealtiel was the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel of Abiud, Abiud of Eliakim, Eliakim of Azor, Azor of Zadok, Zadok of Akim, Akim of Eliud, Eliud of Eleazar, Eleazar of Matan, Matan of Jacob, and Jacob of Joseph, the husband of Mary, who was the mother of Jesus, who is called Christ. There are therefore in all fourteen generations from Abraham to David, fourteen from David to the removal to Babylon, and fourteen from the removal to Babylon to the Christ. The circumstances of the birth of Jesus Christ were these. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they were united in marriage, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. But Joseph, her husband, being a kind-hearted man and unwilling publicly to disgrace her, had determined to release her privately from the betrothal. But while he was contemplating this step, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to bring home your wife Mary, for she is with child through the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to call his name Jesus, for he it is who will save his people from their sins. All this took place in fulfillment of what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. Mark! The maiden will be with child, and will give birth to a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, a word which signifies God with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded, and brought home his wife, but did not live with her until she had given birth to a son. The child's name he called Jesus. Chapter 2 now after the birth of Jesus, which took place at Bethlehem in Judea, in the reign of King Herod, excitement was produced in Jerusalem by the arrival of certain magi from the east, inquiring, Where is the newly born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come here to do him homage. Reports of this soon reached the king, and greatly agitated not only him, but all the people of Jerusalem. So he assembled all the high priests and scribes of the people, and anxiously asked them where the Christ was to be born. At Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for so it stands written in the words of the prophet. 
and thou bethlehem in the land of judah by no means the least honourable art thou among princely places in judah for from thee shall come a prince one who shall be the shepherd of my people israel thereupon herod sent privately for the magi and ascertained from them the exact time of the star's appearing he then directed them to go to bethlehem adding go and make careful inquiry about the child and when you have found him bring me word that i too may come and do him homage after hearing what the king said they went to bethlehem while strange to say the star they had seen in the east led them on until it came and stood over the place where the babe was when they saw the star the sight filled them with intense joy so they entered the house and when they saw the babe with his mother mary they prostrated themselves and did him homage and opening their treasure chests offered gifts to him gold frankincense and myrrh but being forbidden by god in a dream to return to herod they went back to their own country by a different route when they were gone an angel of the lord appeared to joseph in a dream and said rise take the babe and his mother and escape to egypt and remain there till i bring you word for herod is about to make search for the child in order to destroy him so joseph roused himself and took the babe and his mother by night and departed into egypt there he remained till herod's death that what the lord had said through the prophet might be fulfilled out of egypt i called my son then herod finding that the magi had trifled with him was furious and sent and massacred all the boys under two years of age in bethlehem and all its neighborhood according to the date he had so carefully ascertained from the magi then were these words spoken by the prophet jeremiah fulfilled a voice was heard in rama wailing and bitter lamentation it was rachel bewailing her children and she refused to be comforted because they were no more but after herod's death an angel of the lord appeared in a dream to joseph in egypt and said to him rise from sleep and take the child and his mother and go into the land of israel for those who were seeking the child's life are dead so he roused himself and took the child and his mother and came into the land of israel but hearing that archelaus had succeeded his father herod on the throne of judea he was afraid to go there and being instructed by god in a dream he withdrew into galilee and went and settled in a town called nazareth in order that these words spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled he shall be called a nazarene chapter three about this time john the baptist made his appearance preaching in the desert of judea repent he said for the kingdom of the heavens is now close at hand he it is who was spoken of through the prophet isaiah when he said the voice of one crying aloud in the desert prepare ye a road for the lord make his highway straight this man john wore a garment of camel's hair and a loincloth of leather and he lived upon locusts and wild honey then large numbers of people went out to him people from jerusalem and from all judea and from the whole of the jordan valley and were baptized by him in the jordan making full confession of their sins but when he saw many of the pharisees and sadducees coming for baptism he exclaimed o vipers brood who has warned you to flee from the coming wrath therefore let your lives prove your change of heart and do not imagine that you can say to yourselves we have abraham as our forefather for i tell you that god can raise up descendants for abraham from these stones and already the axe is lying at the root of the trees so that every tree which does not produce good fruit will quickly be hewn down and thrown into the fire i indeed am baptizing you in water on a profession of repentance but he who is coming after me is mightier than i his sandals i am not worthy to carry for a moment he will baptize you in the holy spirit and in fire his winnowing shovel is in his hand and he will make a thorough clearance of his threshing floor gathering his wheat into the storehouse but burning up the chaff in unquenchable fire just at that time 
Jesus, coming from Galilee to the Jordan, presents himself to John to be baptized by him. John protested, It is I, he said, who have need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Let it be so on this occasion, Jesus replied, for so we ought to fulfill every religious duty. Then he consented. And Jesus was baptized, and immediately went up from the water. At that moment the heavens opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him, while a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my Son, the dearly loved, in whom is my delight. Chapter 4 at that time Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the desert in order to be tempted by the devil. There he fasted for forty days and nights, and after that he suffered from hunger. So the tempter came and said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to turn into loaves. It is written, replied Jesus, It is not on bread alone that a man shall live, but on whatsoever God shall appoint. Then the devil took him to the holy city, and caused him to stand on the roof of the temple, and said, If you are God's son, throw yourself down, for it is written, To his angels he will give orders concerning thee, and on their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any moment Thou shouldst strike thy foot against a stone. Again it is written, replied Jesus, Thou shalt not put the Lord thy God to the proof. Then the devil took him to the top of an exceedingly lofty mountain, from which he caused him to see all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor, and said to him, all this I will give you, if you will kneel down and do me homage. Be gone, Satan, Jesus replied, for it is written, To the Lord thy God thou shalt do homage, and to him alone shalt thou render worship. Thereupon the devil left him, and angels at once came and ministered to him. Now when Jesus heard that John was thrown into prison, he withdrew into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he went and settled at Capernaum, a town by the lake on the frontiers of Zebulun and Naphtali, in order that these words, spoken through the prophet Isaiah, might be fulfilled. Zebulun's land and Naphtali's land, the road by the lake, the country beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations, the people who were dwelling in darkness have seen a brilliant light, and on those who were dwelling in the region of the shadow of death, on them light has dawned. From that time Jesus began to preach. Repent, he said, for the kingdom of the heavens is now close at hand. And walking along the shore of the lake of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew, throwing a dragnet into the lake, for they were fishers. And he said to them, Come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So they immediately left their nets, and followed him. As he went further on, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zabdi, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zabdi, mending their nets. And he called them, and they at once left the boat and their father, and followed him. Then Jesus traveled through all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every kind of disease and infirmity among the people. Thus his fame spread through all Syria, and they brought all the sick to him, the people who were suffering from various diseases and pains, demoniacs, epileptics, paralytics, and he cured them. And great crowds followed him, coming from Galilee, from the ten towns, from Jerusalem, and from beyond the district, on the other side of the Jordan. Chapter 5 Seeing the multitude of people, Jesus went up the hill. There he seated himself, and when his disciples came to him, he proceeded to teach them, and said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, 
for to them belongs the kingdom of the heavens. Blessed are the mourners, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they as heirs shall obtain possession of the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be completely satisfied. Blessed are the compassionate, for they shall receive compassion. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for it is they who will be recognized as sons of God. Blessed are those who have borne persecution in the cause of righteousness, for to them belongs the kingdom of the heavens. Blessed are you when they have insulted and persecuted you, and have said every cruel thing about you falsely for my sake. Be joyful and triumphant, because your reward is great in the heavens, for so were the prophets before you persecuted. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has become tasteless, in what way can it regain its saltness? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown away and trodden on by the passers-by. You are the light of the world. A town cannot be hid if built on a hilltop, nor is a lamp lighted to be put under a bushel, but on the lampstand, and then it gives light to all in the house. Just so, let your light shine before all men, in order that they may see your holy lives and may give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not for a moment suppose that I have come to abrogate the law or the prophets. I have not come to abrogate them, but to give them their completion. Solemnly I tell you that until heaven and earth pass away, not one iota or smallest detail will pass away from the law until all has taken place. Whoever therefore breaks one of these least commandments and teaches others to break them will be called the least in the kingdom of the heavens. But whoever practices them and teaches them, he will be acknowledged as great in the kingdom of the heavens. For I assure you, that unless your righteousness greatly surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will certainly not find entrance into the kingdom of the heavens. You have heard that it was said to the ancients, Thou shalt not commit murder, and whoever commits murder will be answerable to the magistrate. But I say to you that everyone who becomes angry with his brother shall be answerable to the magistrate, that whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be answerable to the Sanhedrin, and that whoever says, You fool, shall be liable to the Gehenna of fire. If, therefore, when you are offering your gift upon the altar, you remember that your brother has a grievance against you, leave your gift there before the altar, and go and make friends with your brother first, and then return and proceed to offer your gift. Come to terms without delay with your opponent, while you are yet with him on the way to the court, for fear he should obtain judgment from the magistrate against you, and the magistrate should give you in custody to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. I solemnly tell you that you will certainly not be released till you have paid the very last farthing. You have heard that it was said, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I tell you, that whoever looks at a woman and cherishes lustful thoughts has already in his heart become guilty with regard to her. If therefore your eye, even the right eye, is a snare to you, tear it out and away with it. It is better for you that one member should be destroyed, rather than that your whole body should be thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand is a snare to you, cut it off and away with it. It is better for you that one member should be destroyed, rather than that your whole body should go into Gehenna. It was also said, If any man puts away his wife, let him give her a written notice of divorce. But I tell you that every man who puts away his wife, except on the ground of unfaithfulness, causes her to commit adultery, and whoever marries her when so divorced commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to the ancients, Thou shalt not swear falsely, but shalt perform thy vows to the Lord. But I tell you not to swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, 
for it is the footstool under his feet, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your language be, yes, yes, or no, no. Anything in excess of this comes from the evil one. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. But I tell you not to resist a wicked man. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other to him as well. If anyone wishes to go to law with you and to deprive you of your undergarment, let him take your outer one also. And whoever shall compel you to convey his goods one mile, go with him too. To him who asks, give. From him who would borrow, turn not away. You have heard that it was said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I command you all, love your enemies and pray for your persecutors, that so you may become true sons of your Father in heaven. For he raises his son to rise on the wicked as well as the good, and sends rain upon those who do right and those who do wrong. For if you love only those who love you, what reward have you earned? Do not even the tax gatherers do that? And if you salute only your near relatives, what praise is due to you? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You, however, are to be complete in goodness, as your heavenly Father is complete. Chapter 6 But beware of doing your good actions in the sight of men in order to attract their gaze. If you do, there is no reward for you with your Father who is in heaven. When you give in charity, never blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and streets, in order that their praises may be sung by men. I solemnly tell you that they already have their reward. But when you are giving in charity, let not your left hand perceive what your right hand is doing, that your charities may be in secret. And then your father, he who sees in secret, will recompense you. And when praying, you must not be like the hypocrites. They are fond of standing and praying in the synagogues, or at the corners of the wider streets, in order that men may see them. I solemnly tell you that they already have their reward. But you, whenever you pray, go into your own room and shut the door, then pray to your father who is in secret, and your father, he who sees in secret, will recompense you. And when praying, do not use needless repetitions as the Gentiles do, for they expect to be listened to because of their multitude of words. Do not, however, imitate them, for your Father knows what things you need before ever you ask Him. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, may thy name be kept holy. Let thy kingdom come, let thy will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us today our bread for the day and forgive us our shortcomings, as we also have forgiven those who have failed in their duty towards us. And bring us not into temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their offenses, your heavenly Father will forgive you also. But if you do not forgive others their offenses, neither will your Father forgive yours. When any of you fast, never assume gloomy looks as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces in order that it may be evident to men that they are fasting. I solemnly tell you that they already have their reward. But whenever you fast, pour perfume on your hair and wash your face, that it may not be apparent to men that you are fasting, but to your Father who is in secret, and your Father, he who sees in secret, will recompense you. Do not lay up stores of wealth for yourselves on earth, where the moth and wear and tear destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But amass wealth for yourselves in heaven, where neither the moth nor wear and tear destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your wealth is, there also will your heart be. The eye is the lamp of the body. If then your eyesight is good, your whole body will be well lighted. But if your eyesight is bad, your whole body will be dark. 
If, however, the very light within you is darkness, how dense must the darkness be! No man can be the bondservant of two masters, for either he will dislike one and like the other, or he will attach himself to one and think slightingly of the other. You cannot be the bondservants both of God and of gold. For this reason I charge you not to be over-anxious about your lives, inquiring what you are to eat or what you are to drink, nor yet about your bodies, inquiring what clothes you are to put on. Is not the life more precious than its food, and the body than its clothing? Look at the birds which fly in the air. They do not sow or reap or store up in barns, but your heavenly Father feeds them. Are not you of much greater value than they? Which of you, by being over-anxious, can add a single foot to his height? And why be anxious about clothing? Learn a lesson from the wild lilies. Watch their growth. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his magnificence could array himself like one of these. And if God so clothes the wild herbage which today flourishes, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, is it not much more certain that he will clothe you, you men of little faith? Do not be over-anxious, therefore, asking, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all these are questions that Gentiles are always asking. But your heavenly Father knows that you need these things, all of them. But make his kingdom and righteousness your chief aim, and then these things shall all be given you in addition. Do not be over-anxious, therefore, about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own cares. Enough for each day are its own troubles. Chapter 7 Judge not, that you may not be judged, for your own judgment will be dealt, and your own measure meted to yourselves. And why do you look at the splinter in your brother's eye, and not notice the beam which is in your own eye? Or how say to your brother, Allow me to take the splinter out of your eye, while the beam is in your own eye? Hypocrite, first take the beam out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly how to remove the splinter from your brother's eye. Give not that which is holy to the dogs, nor throw your pearls to the swine, otherwise they will trample them under their feet, and then turn and attack you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For it is always he who asks that receives, he who seeks that finds, and he who knocks that has the door opened to him. What man is there among you, who, if his son shall ask him for bread, will offer him a stone? Or if the son shall ask him for a fish, will offer him a snake? If you then, imperfect as you are, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Everything, therefore, be it what it may, that you would have men do to you, do you also the same to them. For in this the law and the prophets are summed up. Enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad the road which leads to ruin, and many there are who enter by it. Because narrow is the gate, and contracted the road which leads to life, and few are those who find it. Beware of the false teachers, men who come to you in sheep's fleeces, but beneath that disguise they are ravenous wolves. By their fruits you will easily recognize them. Are grapes gathered from thorns, or figs from brambles? Just so, every good tree produces good fruit, but a poisonous tree produces bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor a poisonous tree good fruit. Every tree which does not yield good fruit is cut down and thrown aside for burning, so by their fruits at any rate you will easily recognize them. Not every one who says to me, Master, Master, will enter the kingdom of the heavens, but only those who are obedient to my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in thy name? and in thy name expelled demons, and in thy name performed many good works? 
and then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Be gone from me, you doers of wickedness. Everyone who hears these my teachings and acts upon them will be found to resemble a wise man who builds his house upon rock. And the heavy rain falls, the swollen torrents come, and the winds blow and beat against the house, yet it does not fall, for its foundation is on rock. And everyone who hears these my teachings and does not act upon them will be found to resemble a fool who builds his house upon sand. The heavy rain descends, the swollen torrents come, and the winds blow and burst upon the house, and it falls, and disastrous is the fall. When Jesus had concluded this discourse, the crowds were filled with amazement at his teaching, for he had been teaching them as one who had authority, and not as their scribes taught. The end of chapters 1 through 7 of the Gospel according to Matthew from the Weymouth New Testament in Modern Speech. Recording by Mark Penfold.